live stream. So uh, we're just going to wait a moment for some people to arrive. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and let you know, guys know that I have the Civivi Elementum, the button lock version here, <clears throat> and the Civivi Imperium. This is the copper shred carbon fiber and, uh, uh, and the black blade. All right, let's just wait a moment. All right, in the meantime, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and start with some of the questions. Actually, if you guys remember, on the $1,000 Knife 2500 subscriber giveaway, uh, I went ahead and um, didn't ask me anything. That was essentially what I was doing for the, uh, for the giveaway. And so I had you guys post, you know, what are the, what are the questions? What are ask me anything questions you want me to answer here? So I'm going to go through some of them and, uh, you know, see if you guys can get some answers. Um, someone just popped in a couple people, uh, popping in, showing up. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and answer some questions here. So uh, was there a particular first knife that sparked my enthusiasm for knives? Hey, Ethan, how are you doing? Hey, Ian. What's going on, guys? Um, so first knife that sparked my interest for knives was the Benchmade 943, the serrated version, actually. I still have that same knife, the 943 BKS. Um, that is, that is, I, and essentially I was working at Red Lobster at the time. Uh, and I worked both front of the house and back of the house and I did the trucks. Hey, uh, hey Tim, how you go? How, how is it? Um, so, uh, I did the, uh, when I was doing the truck, I, you know, started unloading the truck and realized, Hey, I'm breaking down a lot of boxes need, you know, some sort of something better than a utility knife. So went over to Chesapeake knife and tool. Uh, those of you guys in the Northern Virginia and Maryland area may remember that store. I think it's defunct now. Um, but I went over to Chesapeake knife and tool and, uh, you know, the guy immediately took me over and, uh, Hey Z-Mans, how you doing? The guy immediately took me over to the Benchmade 940, showed me the 940. Uh, but honestly the 943, um, it caught my interest. The 943 really just caught my interest. So, uh, I, you know, went, went and took a look at it. It was 200 bucks. You know, I was 16 at the time, so I didn't have that kind of cash lying around. And so I, I worked for it. I just you know, continued to work and work and work. Eventually I saved up the money and I bought the Benchmade 943 and that thing, I fell in love with it. I was just, you know, I, I carried it with me everywhere, constantly flicked it open. Um, it's a wonder I didn't cut myself with it because I wasn't really very careful with it. Um, but, you know, I, uh, uh, I, I really just put it to use and, you know, I was amazed by how, how great the edge was and it, you know, cut through, it was zipping through the, the wood, the, the tip pierce, you know, great for opening a lot of the boxes we were using. So it was just a great all around knife. I still have it. I've actually, this is my third 943 that I'm on because uh, the other two, uh, I unfortunately lost. So it's my third one. Uh, one of them I lost to TSA and another one I lost uh, in a hospital, actually. I was in a recliner and uh, the clip was loose. Unfortunately, I think it's still in that recliner. Um, in any event, uh, that was the knife that sort of got me into into EDC. So uh, welcome, guys. I have the uh, Civivi Button Lock Elementum here and the Civivi Imperium. Uh, you know, so if you guys I'm, – I'm doing sort of an Ask Me Anything and, and I'm updating – I'm finally answering the questions you guys put on that 2,500 subscriber giveaway. As you guys know, uh, I have a 3,000 subscriber uh, giveaway coming up. So I'm almost at 3,000 subscribers. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, and you're, you're going to want to get in on that giveaway. I also have a giveaway uh, that technically ended yesterday, but I'll go ahead and extend the time because I haven't done the drawing yet. If you haven't already entered, um, it you know make sure you enter it. Right after this live stream is over, I'm going to be doing the drawing on that. So... Uh, you know, make sure you go ahead and do that. That is uh, for Kershaw Endgame. Um, so one of the things I've noticed before I get into more Ask Me Anything questions I just wanted to talk about was is the, the emergence of the budget knife this year. So I think, I think over the last couple of years, um, 
you know, the budget knives have, have really uh, gotten better and better and better. Uh, and you're seeing things like, you know, we branch off into Civivi and then Civivi, you know, finding its place in the market, sort of moving up to a little bit, uh, not quite we level, but under underneath we and then Sencut coming in, right? Um, yeah, 2.99K, it's very, it's very close, right? Um, so, uh, sorry, you know what? I'm actually going to go into... Um, I want to make sure I log into the live here uh, on another channel. I mean, on, on my computer. What time did I start the stream? I just started, so you're not uh, missing anything. But I wanted to make sure I got the chat, so I just pulled it up on my computer, which I have next to me. I'm actually in a hotel. I had to switch rooms uh, because I had no lights. I was originally going to plan to start at 9 o'clock uh, Central, but uh, literally no lights in the room worked. And it's not a cheap hotel. It's a Spring Hill Suites, right? Um, but... Uh, <laughs> No, no lights in the room worked. It was it was crazy. There's like four lamps and none of them had lights. Um, all right. Uh, so anyway, we were talking about the, um, uh, the the budget knives. So budget knives have really come on, and the the interesting thing is that you can really get everything you need in a knife for under a hundred bucks these days. Um, there is almost no reason to go above it unless you're a collector. Right. It used to be that the Benchmade, Benchmade 940, Benchmade, um, uh, you know, now the Benchmade Bugout, um, you know, the uh, uh, the Benchmade Reptilian was still, you know, a little over a hundred bucks, um, but wasn't quite, you know, nobody really likes the plastic handles for the most part, um, you know, and then uh, and then Spider Co. with, you know, they're starting to inch up in prices, so really. A lot of the um, uh, a lot of the other brands are t are coming in and making vast improvements, um, and CRKT is one of them. I heard I saw somebody mention the Pilar Three, which I happen to have with me. So um, it's it, it's a knife that I have uh, that I'm going to be reviewing shortly. Uh, and you know, I I did the review on the Imperium, and I said, look, it's an early contender for knife of the year. The reason I'm having this conversation about budget knives is because. Literally all three of these tables or all three of these knives on the table right now are contenders for knife of the year. And I have at least one other one uh, that is a, is a budget knife as well, or under a knife under a hundred bucks. That's going to be a contender as well. I can't remember the last time I felt really, really excited to put, um, you know, budget knives or, or knives under a hundred bucks on my list as, uh, as top knives of the year. And just so many are coming out all at once that are just really, really, really great. Um, so you're seeing things like Nitro V Steel, like uh, you know, like S35 VN in the eighty dollar range, twenty CV in the eighty dollar range. You're seeing, uh, you know, just uh, amazing things from uh, from Kershaw, from Civivi, from uh, um, fr from all sorts of different uh, companies, and even even knives that are a little less, you know, uh, less there. This is the LCK Large, the new version of the LCK um, from CRKT with the assist on it. CRK assist is vastly improved. Um, I'll get more into that later, uh, but you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of good going on in the budget world right now. So I'm really really amped about that, and it allows me to explore more great knives, and frankly, uh, it makes it easier uh, for me to buy a bunch of knives for giveaways when I can be in that eighty dollar range, um, and I can give away one, two, three knives, and then you know. Uh, um, you know, I can do a lot more giveaways. I also am going to mix in, you know, those two hundred, three hundred dollar knife giveaways. Uh, you guys know that I do. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Ethan says uh, he traded his Norseman for a Hinder XM eighteen, three and a half inch Spanto, uh, no choil from DLT trading. Yeah, so I have a an XM eighteen three and a half inch uh, Warn Click no choil from DLT, the exclusive uh, there, and I absolutely love that. It's one of my favorite. Uh, knives that I have, um, so uh, that's a good, a good trade. Uh, I mean, the Norsemans uh, you probably have a little bit more value than the uh, the XM 18s, um, but uh, maybe you get some cash on your end. Um, let's see. Hallucinosis says, "Growing up, I had a Bucklight two in 425 M steel. Uh, I don't even know what that steel is, and it was fine. That's as much as anyone needs, though. Too many people out there don't know how to sharpen knives." Um, so I, I actually agree uh, with you on that. Frankly, um, you know, uh, uh, like CVV's 9CR18MOV. Hey, Jesse B, what's going on? 
Um, so the, the 9 CR18 MOV is great. You guys know that I love the 9 CR18 MOV that Savivi does. Uh, it is, um, I mean, it's not significantly better than 8 uh, CR, but it's better enough. And, it's, and I like it better than D2. It's better enough that it makes a difference and uh, it sharpens really, really well. Uh, and, you know, that, that is all you need. You don't need, you know, to go crazy uh, on the knife steels. But it is good to see things like 20 CBN S35 VN, uh, you know, around 80 bucks. Um, plastic is better than 9 CR. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> good one. Um, speaking of 9 CR 18 MOV, uh, here's a Civivi Elementum fixed blade version. Uh, I'll get into that later as well. Um, but, uh, I believe this has, um, well, this isn't 9 CR. I think this is like 10 CR actually, uh, which is something that I, I am going to be trying out. I don't, I've never used 10 CR. Um, but I believe that this one is 10 CR. 425M is very close to 420HC, which Buck, Buck switched to in the early nineties after the factory made 425M steel, uh, burned down. Interesting story behind that. Uh, oh, the, the steel factory burned down. That's interesting. Um, yeah, so, for, so Buck, you know, and, and this reminds me, you know, Neves Knives was just talking about this on his, uh, on, on his live. The, the heat treat matters, right? Buck does an awesome heat treat, has that boss heat treat. And that 420HC that Buck does, which I guess was the 425M, uh, I don't know how long uh, Boss has been working with the company, um, but... Uh, you know, assuming that heat tree was somewhat similar, it, it's going to go a lot farther than, um, you know, even some HCRs or, or D2s because of the fact that you have that good heat treat, right? If you get some cheap, uh, cheap D2, you're, you're not going to get very good edge retention um, because the heat treat's not going to be right. So that matters, right? Um, all right, let's go ahead and talk about some of these. Uh, hey, Mark, what's going on? Oh, Mark's uh, saying hi to Tim. It's like when somebody waves to you and you're uh, you're waving back, and uh, they're not waving at you. <laughs> What's going on, Mark? Um, all right. So next question we got here. By the way, you guys can feel free to throw out questions on and ask me anything um, as well. But I'm I'm reading through the questions that were originally on the um, the 2,500 subscriber giveaway. Uh, the reason I had you guys do the comments was so I can go through them. Uh, all right. So. Was there a, uh, let's see, I already did that one. Uh, what was your first real knife? Same, same answer, 943. Um, what keeps me interested in, in this hobby? Uh, so uh, what keeps me interested in the hobby? What's up, Scott? So honestly, it, part of it is the fact that I really like experiencing new things. I like experiencing new, uh, new knives. That, that is part of it. Um, I like seeing all the different locking mechanisms, you know, the button lock here, um, the front flipper here, the thumb studs uh, here, the, um, the fact that you can, uh, you know, sp spidey flick that or thumb roll the, the hole there, uh, you know, the fidget factor that a lot of that keeps me motivated. I'm a huge fidgeter. I have ADHD um, and I'm a huge fidgeter, but uh, what, what I think what really keeps me in the hobby, honestly, is the people. I'm very involved on, on the Facebook groups. Um, you know, I, I, I comment a lot on the Facebook groups. I see Reddit stuff here and there, but honestly, I'm not as involved in Reddit. Um, and then I, I do things like the live show here and do the do the channel. And having you guys comment on the channel and, and uh, you know, sort of participate in discussions uh, is really one of the things that keeps me going. Um, so... What's my favorite movie and TV show? Uh, so my favorite movie is My Cousin Vinny. Uh, it's not because I'm a lawyer, although that's part of it. But um, hey, GSR, what's going on? Uh, so it's, it, it's part of why I like it. But it's just a really good movie, right? Um, there's just so many good scenes in that. And it's, it's odd that it's a comedy. And, you know, honestly, just from a, a nerdy legal perspective, the cross-examinations that uh, he goes through, through are just great and marissa tomei is awesome in that movie so so that's my favorite movie um favorite tv show uh you know i i don't have one particular favorite tv show i like the marvel cinematic universe and the marvel tv shows that come out of it um you know but uh sometimes they get a little preachy with uh 
with politics. I'd rather just deal with the superheroes. But um, I also really like, you know, shows like Blacklist that are, uh, you know, that are, uh, I guess, thriller type shows. Um, so that's sort of what I like to watch. <clears throat> Oh, I also really like things like, you know, uh, where people build things. I like, uh, you know, Dirty Jobs, uh, you know, was, was a good show. Uh, there's, what else, Fortune Fire. I actually really enjoy Fortune Fire. Um, so, you know, that, that's great, too. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I'm missing any comments here. All right, I think I'm caught up on the comments. Uh, Spider Comanics versus Part Para Three versus Shaman. I know not in the same leagues, but still my favorite. Uh, so, are you, if you're asking me which my favorite is out of those, I'm going to tell you it is the Shaman. The Shaman's still my favorite, uh, but if you're if you're asking me what I'm going to, all right, my favorite EDC is the Shaman out of those three. Uh, however, the I would say the Para Three for Fidget. Uh, if, if I just want to fidget with something that day um, or the, if I'm going to be doing a lot of, uh, you know, harder use type of work, cutting zip ties, things like that, I'm going to take the Maddox with me. So it's sort of a cop, a cop out to say, it depends on what I'm doing that day. But out of those three overall, I, I pick the shaman still. Um, let's see. <clears throat> hey, C. Lemansky, what's going on? So how has your perspective and ideals possibly changed if at all, regarding the law and legal systems since law school. Oof, getting a, uh, that question, I guess, is a little bit deeper than uh, some of the other knife questions I get. So my ideals, I mean, look, I've always been a realist. I'm not, you know, so my business partner and I are very different personalities. My business partner is the, is the person who, you know, is going to be, he, he's the mediator. He's going to do a lot of um, negotiations and uh, and do mediations. I, I, I'm the, I'm the litigator. I go in and do trials. So, uh, I, I, I enjoy doing that stuff. So how, what does that mean? How does that change impact ideals? Well, I'm a realist. And so my ideals haven't changed much since law school. Uh, I will say that, you know, I always focus on the practical more than, you know, the legal theory. A lot of people get caught up in, uh, w w with lawyers as to, what the right argument is or what the, um, or what the, you know, uh, how to solve a problem, you know, you know, from a legal perspective, I'm more about solving the problem so that the problem actually gets solved. Right. So, uh, what's the difference? Well, sometimes you, you know, it's better, you're better off taking a different route than going to trial. Um, you know, not just settlement, maybe there's some other alternative out there that you, you, you haven't thought about some sort of, you know, one of the things we do, we do, um, in addition to personal injury, we do employment law. So there's a federal employee, or employee system, uh, retirement benefit called, um, first disability retirement, right? And so, uh, first disability retirement has, um, uh, that is a different alternative than actual litigation. And it's an alternative that honestly solves a lot of problems for a lot of people. So that's an example of, you know, being a realist over, you know, fighting a case till the end. Now, that being said, I love being in court and I will, uh, <laughs> will argue until the day's done. I love being aggressive with other attorneys and, uh, and objecting, you know, um, I, I do get accused from some uh, female attorneys sometimes of mansplaining or over talking, talking over them, but I do that to everyone. It's not, you know, female attorneys think I'm doing it because they're, because they're women. I just do it to everyone. I, I talk over people. Um, the, let's see, let me go back to the comments here. I think I missed some things. Um, so Z-Man's EDC says the Imperium is a front flipper, right? So the Imperium is a front flipper. You know, you can see the, uh, the front flipper tab right here, but it's also thumb studs. So you can use the thumb stud here. You can use the thumb stud for a spidey flick, you can use the front flipper here. And one of the things I covered in my review of the of the uh, Imperium is check out the, the jimping on the top of that front flipper. That is a hugely important feature that I think a lot of other companies uh, ignore or overlook. And I will say that um, even we slash the Vivi overlooked it. So I have a uh, I have a the Gareth Bull um, drop Miora. 
right? I, I have it. I don't think I did a review on it yet. I've had it for a while, but because it's not really available on drop.com, I'm not really a, in a rush to do the review on it. But the, um, uh, but the, the Miura doesn't have that jimping. Um, it still flips great, but it doesn't have that jimping. The Hazakura, which I also, from Concept Knives, which I showed in the video on the Imperium, uh, does not have that either. And actually, it causes me to slip off sometimes when I'm, when I'm flipping it. But having that jimping on top makes it so that I can literally, I don't have to be behind this. I can literally be on top of it and, uh, and still roll it out, which I think is great. Um, all right. So, yeah, Z-Man, definitely pick one up. Uh, I will say that I'm having a hard time deciding between the Imperium and, and the Concept Hazakura, which one I like better. They are both amazing knives. Um, just bought an Ultratech and it's killing my thumb. Will it get better? Uh, so I also just bought an Ultratech. Uh, <laughs> I have two of them. Uh, but the uh, it, So I have a video that will... Um, so two things. It will tear up your thumb a little bit. Um, it, it, the, the action in some of them can be stiffer than the action in others. You can improve the action by putting a, a, a tiny drop of oil, uh, you know, in the, um, uh, in the blade to help coax it out. Now, that being said, um, you know, it is the first step would be to spray it out with an air can. Okay. If that doesn't work, I have a video on my knife tube series where I show, you know, if, if you use, if you use a very tiny spray, like a, very, very just the smallest spray of WD-40 uh, in, in there. Don't do too much because you're going to end up getting gunk in there if you do too much. But just the tiniest spray, you can improve the um, – and then a little bit of a drop of oil or something under the button. That should help improve the action on your Ultratech if it's stiff. Um, but some of the Microtechs are stiffer than others. The Cypher is stiffer than the uh, – uh, yeah, or just or just get a Guardian Tactical, like Tim says. Guardian Tactical is much smoother, a lot less stiff uh, than the Microtech Ultratech. But that is that is how you improve the action on the Ultratech. Um, all right, so Eric for EDC says uh, Triple E is, uh, is or I still need to get you the the Rec 940. I also want you to check out some of the some of his regrind work as well. Two of my top three are from Rec. So uh, Rec is Razor Edge Knives. By the way, I think he actually had to change the name of. Uh, of razor edge knives um, because it conflicted with somebody else's company. So I think it's called just, um, uh, just Ed, razor edge or edge knives or something. I can't remember exactly what he changed it to, but he put out a, um, uh, you know, a, an email on it. Uh, I, so I was able to get a blade. Eric offered me to get the, uh, another, a different grind on the same blade. And I, I'm definitely going to take him up on that. Uh, he is another guy who lives in Houston, which is great. Uh, and so we'll, we'll meet up at some point and grab that. And I'm going to be doing a, a video on my 940 collection. I haven't shown the 940 collection on the channel yet, but uh, I think you guys are going to be impressed if you guys like the 940. Um, I do, I'm not on quite on Zach's stuff level, but I have probably about 13 or 14 variants of the 940. Uh, some of which are, are fairly rare. So, uh, you know, I, I do plan on doing that video at some point. I also have, you know, sort of my um, personal build on the Razor Edge knives. So, uh, so that's great. Let's see. Uh, Tim says, Monster Racing says, I always wanted to become a lawyer, but I was foolish when I was young and picked the next girlfriend over college. Man, sometimes those girls will get you. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, you know, but it sounds like it's an X. I'm sorry, sorry for that. Uh, all right. So, B B Crow says I want a Recon 35. Can't find any in stock. So, um, if you want a Recon 35 and you can't get them in stock, the best place to get them right now is uh, is either on Reddit if you're part of the Reddit groups, Blade forums if you're on there. Honestly, I like the Facebook groups. So there is a Facebook group specifically for Guardian Tactical, uh, and Guardian Tact that Facebook group has Recon 35s for sale all the time, uh, and usually in very good condition. So if you're not on Facebook, go create a profile, even if it's you know just for knives, uh, and you know get on on those groups because I, I think it's uh, you're gonna be able to expand your horizons and get some good deals. So. Uh, Hallucinosis says, I have a little crew wear uh, razor edge knives ember with coconut micarta handle. It's my favorite tiny fixed blade. So I really want one of his fixed blades. Uh, he does 
awesome grinds and I, I've, I've been wanting one of his fixed blades. I can't seem to get in on any of his fixed blade drops. Um, I had such a hard time getting the one uh, Razor Edge Knives 940 blade that I got. Uh, but he does drops kind of infrequently and usually at times when I'm just not available. Um, let's see. Next question. By the way, I'm going to interrupt this, uh, this broadcast for a moment and uh, just remind you guys that I have the affiliate link for DLT. Um, I have it at the bottom of a lot of my, pretty much all of my videos for the most part. Um, and if you, if you order knives, order through DLT. I'm also talking to another retailer about uh, working with them as well. Uh, it's going to help the channel, uh, again, get you more giveaways. Um, my goal is to almost always have a, give a giveaway going at any moment. Um, you know, so that is my goal for the channel. And the way to... Uh, to get that happening is going to be through you guys using those affiliate links because that helps me fund the, those giveaways. Uh, I have probably spent ten thousand dollars of my own money on giveaways on this channel, uh, you know, and just to, to some other people I know. And uh, you know, I don't mind continuing to spend my own money on those on those things, but it, it's going to be prohibitive to do that on a regular basis. So you know, I really do need you guys to use the links. Um, if possible, when you uh, uh, when when you buy, it's going to help those giveaways for the channel. So, uh, but I am working with another knife retailer because um, DLT is still my favorite, by the way. Uh, but the the reason I want need to work with another knife retailer is, is DLT doesn't carry all brands. So I want to work with a retailer, not Amazon, um, to uh, to to bring you other brands like Civivi because uh, and CRKT because uh, DLT doesn't really carry a lot of those. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and look at another question. Yes. Uh, so B Crow says, by the way, that uh, the DLT has the afterpay option. So yeah, d definitely check out the afterpay option. It allows you to pay it off over several payments over time. Um, so if you, if there's a knife that just pops up that you have to have, one of those for me is the Sumo, the, the Hoback Sumo popped up, still available, by the way, on DLT's website. Uh, I have that coming. I've already ordered it. I have that coming. And it looks like I've, it's been billed by a lot of people as the ultimate fidget knife. So I am very excited to get that in hand. Um, but uh, uh, but it is expensive. It's about 550 bucks. So, um, you know, let's see. Uh Tim says the Slender Man is a, is a nice OTF, especially for the price. Yeah, so I, I had one of those, and I actually um, did uh, sold that on a uh, on a charity fundraiser, um, I believe. And I believe that was during the fundraiser. Let's see. Is there a highly lauded or sought after knife or knife brand that is beloved by the community that you just can't get behind? So. Um, one of the ultimate knives that everyone is absolutely in love with that I can't get behind is the original Civivi Elementum. So it, I've done reviews on it and uh, it is, it's a decent knife. It's not bad for somebody. I have a large size, large glove size hands. Um, this size on the button lock Civivi Elementum, which is larger than the regular Elementum is perfect. Perfect. Um, but the, the, ha I, the handle on the original Civivi Elementum just doesn't do it for me. It, it, it's kind of bleh. You know, look, it's a great deal of 50 bucks, but it's just, it, you know, it, it, it's not my cup of tea. Now, this Elementum I can really get behind. Um, and the fixed blade Elementum I can also get behind. Uh, like I said, I have that um, for you guys in a bit, but uh, very happy with, uh, with that one. Uh, the other one that I really can't get behind, uh, which I'm going to do review shortly i just got it in hand and just don't love it is the crkt squid um guys i don't get that knife it is kind of chunky uh you know from a from a height standpoint you know um it, it's not ergonomic at all and it, it's just it, it's not i don't like it um you know it, <laughs> the, the edge on it isn't particularly good uh the blade shape isn't particularly good I don't get why it's such a beloved knife. Uh, I really don't. Um, let me think if there's something sort of higher end that, 
that I don't like. So the, the Norseman isn't, as, isn't ideal for EDC, I'll tell you that much. Um, but a lot of people, that gets a mixed bag by a lot of reviewers. What is my most carried knife for this year? Uh, Eric asks. Oof, that's a good one. Um, let's see. So the, this year started about six months ago. So let me think of a knife that I have had since then. Um, I will probably say... You know, I'm, what is my most carried knife? I do such a rotation, it's hard to pick a most carried knife. Uh, it's hard to, let me think. What did I, what have I carried the most? So I've definitely carried, as far as fixed blades go, my most carried knives are the Phobos uh, Tier 1 Mini and the Bradford Guardian 3 Warncliff. For... Regular knives, I have carried the I've carried the Rotten Designs Evo 2.0 quite a bit from CKF. Uh, I have carried the XM18 quite a bit. Uh, I have carried the three and a half inch. I have carried the I've got, and recently I've got a Jaeger Blades Custom that I've been carrying a lot. So let's go with those for now. Uh, I don't have my, by the way, for those of you guys who did, were missed out earlier, I, I'm in a hotel. I don't have all my knives with me. Sometimes having those knives in front of me can give me an idea of what I have in my collection. I have over 100 knives. So since I have over 100 knives, I'm not necessarily going to remember what I've got all the time. But again, I do a pretty good rotation. So there's not really one thing that I carry so much more than everything else. And I have to keep a rotation in order to continue doing reviews. Um, all right. So Tim says, you definitely do the most giveaways out of all the channels. Uh, as a longtime viewer supporter, thank you for always being great to everyone. You've done a ton for my son and I. Thank you. Uh, Tim, you are, you've been with this channel, uh, I know, since the beginning. And I really appreciate you as, as, as a viewer. I appreciate all my viewers. But um, I, I definitely appreciate those who've been with me for a long time since the beginning. Uh, and those who continually comment on the videos, even if, even if they're new, uh, it, it makes for community. And that's what I'm trying to build. It's one of the reasons I do all the giveaways that I do, um, because I'm trying to build a community. I try to get involved when there is, uh, when there is uh, you know, uh, charity raffles and auctions and things, um, when there's dog piles online. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a dog pile is, it is where people throw in, you know, knives, uh, sort of crowdsourced and other people buy them and then donate to a GoFundMe, uh, you know, instead of paying the person. Um, so, you know, th those types of things are great. Uh, Tim says, not a fan of the squid either. Damon says, thoughts on the CTF Chimera. So I, don't, I haven't had the Chimera. Um, if anyone has one, wants to let me borrow one from the, for the channel, uh, that would be great. I can get my thoughts on it. Um, I've actually, other than being an intermediary for an international, for a couple of international buyers. Um, and, uh, and Mark Goldstein, who's been a, a long supporter of the channel. Um, other than those two, I don't really get a lot of knives that I borrow from other people. Most of them are actually from my own collection. Um, all right. Uh, Z-Man's or pro X says medical bills right now. So I can only wish, uh, definitely, definitely feel better and get over that. Um, we're, we're behind you. Um, In Virginia, we can carry anything as long as it's not concealed. Is deep carry pocket clip considered concealed? Uh, so I'm not going to give legal advice. I am a lawyer, but I'm not going to give legal advice in Virginia for two reasons. One is uh, I don't know Virginia law, even though I used to live in Virginia. Uh, and I do not want to open myself up to malpractice, potential malpractice. Um, so uh, I will say, you know, know your know your local laws. Go Do your best to read them. Knife, knife rights has a good uh, go, knife rights.org has a good chart of what is and isn't legal uh, to do in Virginia uh, or if, in all states, really. Uh, and so definitely check out them as a resource. Um, thoughts on the 940-1. This is from Stolen Costco Cup. Uh, so as I just mentioned before, I have about, um, 
uh, I have about 30, or not 30, I'm sorry, 13 or 14 uh, 940s. One of them is the 941, uh, and I love the 940. It is, um, it, it was one of my first knives. The 943 was my first knife. I I love the 940 and uh, and and collect it. And the 940-1 is a great knife. I will say on the 940-1, the only thing I will tell you is if you're thinking about getting one, do two things: do yourself a favor and um, and buy on the secondary market because it's going to be possibly up to hundred dollars cheaper to, to buy it on the secondary market. Second, um, yeah, usually they they go for about 175 to 200 on the secondary market. Second, make sure that when you buy it, um, you really get buy from a reputable guy on uh, or girl on uh, in the community who has plenty of vouchers. Do not buy from uh, a 940. Any knife that has a lot of clones on the market, be very careful about buying from someone without a really established track record on the secondary market. You're better off paying the extra money and buying from from a, straight from a dealer if you are going to. Um, uh, if you're going to be buying, uh, you know, um, without vouchers. So, and, you know, one or two vouchers is not enough for a knife that's really heavy cloned. Um, and if you don't know whether a knife is cloned or not, get a lot of pictures, get video, and, and watch my Knife Noob uh, video on clones. You can see some of the, the, um, uh, some of the different things that manufacturers do on clones in order to prevent yourself from getting in trouble with clones. All right. Um, I think, uh, Tim, are you asking what is a great knife to have over five ounces? Oh, he says that is a, so let me catch up on the comments. Weight is a big factor for me. Only knife I have over five ounces is a Microtech SOCOM Elite. Yeah, oh, that is a knife. Yeah. So the Microtech SOCOM Elite is a great knife to have, for sure. Um, Wish has a 940 for 1974. Yeah, that Wish 940 is 100% fake. Uh, never buy, never, ever, ever buy from Wish. Um, you will wish you hadn't. Okay, so let me go ahead and do the next question here. Um, what band do you always recommend when someone asks for a music recommendation? Uh, so I've had sort of a weird music journey. Um, a couple of you guys know that I have done uh, raps on uh, on the channel in the past. Um, there were a couple of people that requested me to do it because I mentioned that I could do it. Uh, and uh, if you go back, you can actually find those videos. Um, probably search triple E, EDC, and rap. I assume it'll come up. Uh, but so, uh, you know, you... I do have, uh, I did listen to rap. It was more mostly underground rap uh, growing up. Um, everything, you know, uh, I, I listened to a lot of things like, uh, like Atmosphere, um, you know, Brother Ali, uh, Mostaf, Talib Kweli. That, that's sort of what I grew up on. Um, and then uh, with respect to, to rock, I grew up on, you know, uh, uh, like the alternative era, Nirvana, Bush, all, all that stuff. Um, so, you know, but if, if you're asking what band would I recommend, um, I don't know. I mean, I would definitely say to check out, I like, I like stuff with lyrics, right? So, you know, from rap, from a rap genre, I'd probably say, Hey, check out Hobson's ill mind of, uh, um, ill mind of Hobson five, right. It has ill mind of Hobson five, six, seven, and, uh, and nine are actually pretty good, um, lyrically. And then, um, you know, uh, token, who's like a young, a young kid who's been rapping since he's a teen has a, a bunch of really good wordplay, uh, which I find interesting. Um, so I'd probably point you in that direction. Um, so eggs, sunny side up or over easy, uh, sunny side up. Um, what's my favorite food? Uh, I'm going to go with ribs. Uh, I like ribs. Let's go with ribs. Um, What is my go-to entire EDC setup right now? Uh, so my EDC setup for, um, you know, uh, AirPods. I've got AirPods. The uh, AirPods. I, I think these are the Pro or whatever. Um, I've got yeah. MF Doom was a lyrical genius. Yes, unfortunately he uh, passed away. Rest in peace. Um, 
so uh so yeah i've got the airpods i've got a knife like i said i rotate my knives uh i i, I don't have it with me but i usually have a pen um i do, i have a tactile turn pen that's probably my favorite pen but i'm much more likely to carry my my um hinder uh investigator just because it's a lot lighter or smaller um or my uh bench made um damascus pen just because i really like it uh, so th that's sort of my pen setup. My flashlight is an Olight uh, Mini Warrior uh, in titanium, and I still have it in SR, uh, SR1 Baton 2 uh, is one of my favorite uh, ones. And um, let's see, anything else that I'm missing? Oh, my wallet is, so if you guys know, I have my Westmade wallet. So uh, let me go ahead and grab that actually. So this is the Westmade wallet. Um, I did a video on this, and this was actually donated to the channel by Westmade. Uh, it replaced my Ridge. Ridge was my favorite wallet for a long time. Uh, this replaced it because this is G10, and it doesn't uh, scratch the titanium on my knives because I sometimes carry this in the same pocket. So uh, this has really replaced my Ridge wallet. I still use that sort of minimal minimalist wallet as my, uh, as my go-to. So that's, that's my EDC setup. <clears throat> um, let's see what we have here. Uh, what comments did I miss? So Tim says, I have to absolutely have to say, I absolutely love five finger death punch. Uh, we were talking about the music. Yeah. Five finger death punch for, for rock is definitely, that's exactly who I was thinking of when I was saying, I, I really like lyrics. So from a rock perspective, Five Finger Death Punch is one of my favorite rock bands. Um, so uh, great call on that one. So let's see. Uh, Ian says, do you collect anything other than knives or am I into other EDC items? So as I just mentioned, I do collect pens. Not collect pens, but I, I do have a bunch of different pens um, that are, uh, you know, uh, I, I guess part of my EDC. I don't necessarily collect collect them. I just sort of grab what I think is, is nice. Um, I did get that. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw my, um, my Ridge pen. I just got the Ridge, the Ridge titanium pen, which I was less than impressed with. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, sometimes companies have a, have a miss on it. I'm going to do a, a more in-depth review of that Ridge pen, but um, for the same price, really actually $5 cheaper, go get a tactile turn pen. They are way nicer. Um, and they're sold at DLT, so you can use my link. Um, all right. So I know shameless plug screaming pirate EDC. What is up? By the way, I think the congratulations is in order for you. Didn't you get uh, to a milestone recently on your channel? I thought, I thought I saw that you did. Um, so, uh, so definitely congratulations to you on that. Bees Blades apparently also has a milestone. Congratulations, Bees Blades. Check out both their channels, Screaming, Screaming Pirate EDC and, um, uh, and Bees Blades. Definitely check out both of those. Hey, what's up, Beaver Baron? Um, uh, Hallucinosis says, what about fountain pens? So I have not gotten into fountain pens. Now, my business partner's father is really into fountain pens, there's a place in Houston called Drum Ghouls. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys are in Houston, but Drum Ghouls is a fine writing instrument place that also sells Benchmade and Microtech. So uh, I do go over there to buy knives and um, I sort of have been eyeing some, some fountain pens uh, as time has gone on. So I may get into them, but I'm not into them yet. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and talk about some of these knives here as you guys continue to ask questions and then I'll get back to some of the Ask Me Anything. Uh, so. You guys recently saw, unless you guys have any specific questions about the uh, Imperium, I'm going to move that off the table because uh, you, I just did the first impressions on it. So you guys can check out that video. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, these two knives. Uh, first, the CRKT Polar 3. Um, this thing really surprised me. The original Polar, I was not, you know, uh, it was good. You know, I, mean, I wasn't excited about it. But it was good, a little thick behind the edge, um, pretty good ergonomically, a little bit small, um, you know, but it was good. But it didn't blow me away. 
this this Pilar three is very nice ergonomically, a very good size for EDC, a very nice almost spear point you know blade shape. It looks like it's sort of a slightly reverse tanto ish, but it it's more like a spear point almost, um, which is just great you know for EDC across the board. And when you you know space it out between a choil and your finger and the uh, and the point is right in there, it, it really makes piercing tasks very easy. So um, very cool with that. They went with a nice deep carry pocket clip on here. Um, it could be a little higher, but uh, it's it's pretty nice. The G10 on here lightens this up just enough because this is stainless steel. I kind of wish they went with with uh, you know, well, might have been. No, you know what? Stainless steel is fine on this. I was thinking maybe it would have been better as a G, as a G10 liner lock. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's not bad um, as a as a steel frame lock. So go look at flagpole. What's up? I know you won one of the knives recently. What's going on? Um, so uh, so yeah, this is uh, this has been a pretty good knife so far. And guys, the action on this is actually really good. Uh, it is. I'm not, I didn't even check into what kind of, you know, does this have bearings or what, do they try to put it on bearings? If they didn't put it on bearings, it is really smooth for, for washers. So I've got to open this up and check what's inside. But this, uh, this Polar 3 is really, really uh, making an impression on me. And this, the Civivi uh, Elemental Button Lock. Guys, I know it's out of stock, um, but when it comes back in stock, make sure you pick one up because... Uh, and look, I know a lot of people are complaining about the lack of a flipper tab or the lack of thumb studs or, you know, or any other opening method than this, but this is so much fun. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera. You know, this is so much fun, uh, going back and forth like that. Um, it actually does work out very well. So it goes in and out, um, without a problem, uh, stops just at the right place going out and stops just at the right place going in. Uh, very, very happy with it overall. Um, yeah, the, so Bees Blade says the Polar 3 isn't anything like the first two. I have to agree with that. The Polar 3 is, is a different knife. It has the same aesthetic, but it's a different knife. Very, It's great. Um, Ethan asks, what type of pocket clip am I running on, on the Hinder XM18? Honestly, the standard clip, the standard Hinder clip that comes with it. Um, uh, mine is, I have two XM18s. One is uh, vintage with it a um, RC Blade Works linen micarta scale, and the other one is an X is a um, all working finish with a working finish tie scale, tie to textured tie scale. And I kept the original clips. I like them. I, I do. I like the original clips. I know they're not deep carry, but doesn't matter to me. Um, all right. So the, yeah, this Civivi Elementum is awesome so far. Uh, very very happy with it. It's it's a night and day different, just like this, just like the Polar three is a different knife than the, you know, Polar one and two, the, the Polar and the, uh, uh, and the original Polar. This is a different knife than the original Elementum. It's a different knife. Uh, and if, so if you, if you're like me and you're underwhelmed, you know, look, it is, is the original Elementum a good knife? Yes, it's a good knife, but it is underwhelming if you have high expectations of it. Um, and it's not necessarily my cup of tea size wise. So this is a larger knife and it is way more, you know, it's perfect. It's a full size knife. Look at that large, large size glove hands, perfect grip on that. Um, just great blade shape all around. Nice jumping up here. That's knocked down very well. It's knocked down, but it's still grippy. The micarta on here actually has grown on me. Um, some of Civivi's micarta is is more meh, but this has been good so far. Um, and the uh, of course you got the Civivi deep carry clip, so uh, that's nice. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the next one. We're going to look at the uh, another Civivi. I got a lot of Civivis recently. Uh, this is the Civivi Elementum fixed blade. This is another one that is um, uh, that is I guess an Elementum you know variation. So there's two different types of fixed blades uh, that the Elementum has. There is this one, which has the, uh, the, the rounded G10 scale. So these are contoured. Um, as you can see, they sort of have a little bit of a Coke bottle shape. 
uh, where it's sort of contoured, flared out that way, and then flared, contoured over this way. Uh, and then they have uh, other versions of it that are completely flat. And I think some of the other versions of it, the flat ones, uh, I can't remember on hand, but I think the flat ones might be D2 steel. Um, and this one might be 10, I don't, know if I, I don't know if it's on here. It's like 10 CR, 10 CR. I don't know, it's like 10 CR or something. Um, I don't know much about that steel yet, but I'll definitely give you guys an update on it. Uh, but it, it is really nice. Um, you know, they, they, this is this is a nice knife. Just size-wise, so you can see it against the elemental here. It's actually even a little larger than this one. Uh, so the, this one's larger than the original elementum, and this one's larger than the button lock elementum. So... Some, some things right off the bat that you notice about this knife, um, like I said, they have some scales that are flat, and then these are contoured. Just make sure when you pick it up, you know which ones you're getting. Um, flat scales are good for when you want, you know, less imprinting and low profile on a fixed blade against your waist. Um, and, you know, if you want better grip, the contoured handles are going to be better. The, so a couple things you notice right off the bat is the ergonomics on this are, are awesome. There is, they are great. Uh, and so I'm very happy with the ergonomics. The jimping, just like on the uh, button lock elementum, is fantastic. Same with the blade shape. Um, the fixed blade has a flipper tab. Uh, and what the hell, Sadidi? <laughs> why, why, why put a flipper tab on a fixed blade? They're trying to preserve aesthetically what, the, uh, what it looks like, the elementum looks like. Eh, you know, but... Um, I, I would have preferred they do a choil, but I will say this. If you use that flipper tab like a choil, um, you don't notice a difference of not having a choil because it actually works as a choil. Um, see how, how my finger is actually not, not in contact with the edge? Um, it works as a choil. So it is weird to have a flipper, um, but it is it works. Another weird thing, um, Savivi included a lanyard. Uh, and why they included a lanyard this big is beyond me, um, especially on a knife with, with a sheath that you wear vertical on the waist, right? So you got to wear this vertical, and then you got this, you know, uh, this flapping around as you're carrying it, bothering you. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so you, there's that. The other thing is be aware, the way this sheath is set up, you have the, uh, the the clasp that closes the sheath coming across where the blade goes. So just be you're going to have to be careful to clear the clasp when you pull this out. Uh, is one of the things I noticed. Also, the sheath sheath itself says Savivi, which uh, honestly I'd prefer they didn't. Um, and uh, the sheath itself is kind of I'm not sure it's real leather. It might be a leather substitute. So. I mean, it could be leather. I've got to look at the specs on it, but it doesn't feel like leather. So uh, just something else to be aware of. Um, but the sheath does work. It works. Uh, and, uh, you know, for the price, you can't really complain too much because uh, I, th I think this was fairly cheap. I don't remember the exact price on it. Maybe it was like 80, 80 90 bucks, something like that. Um, but for a fixed blade in this price range, uh, not bad. Okay, starting to, starting to lose some people. I guess I'll take the fixed blade off. Let me go ahead and get back to some of the questions, some of the comments here. Um, Top Dog said, underwhelming for sure. I wonder if he was talking about the original Elementum. Um, that fixed blade looks like a flipper at first glance, uh, says Pro X. Yep, <laughs> definitely does. Uh, Ethan says he just picked up the, the Artisan Cutlery Sea Snake. All blackout. That that looks like an awesome knife. I'm actually really excited to check out. Let me put something else on here. I'm really excited to check out the uh, the Sea Snake. I haven't gotten it yet. I'm kind of late to the party on it, so I'm gonna wait to get one. Uh, what's my favorite? Go like a flag flagpole says. What's my favorite method of sharpening? My favorite method of sharpening. Uh, honestly, I have a Wicked Edge Go, so I, I use that a lot. I've also got the. Um, What's the workshop one? The precision, precision adjust. So I've got that one too, but uh, I don't necessarily love that one. I've got another workshop uh, that is a guided system, not a guided system. A um, it has one of those angles, uh, you know, that 
uh, that you follow. But I like the Wicked Edge. That, that's how I sharp. When I, when I have to do a real sharpening of a knife, I use my Wicked Edge Go. And for 200 bucks, guys, 200 bucks, the Wicked Edge Go is worth it. Um, if, you, if you own at least, I'm going to say if you own at least 20 knives and you don't have a Wicked Edge Go, get a Wicked Edge Go. Okay. Um, so uh, JN says, is this the LCK? Yes, this is actually the LCK large, the new, new for this year. Uh, a couple of you guys may remember from my channel that I, one of my favorite really, really like super budget knives is like, anything under 35 bucks. I would call a super budget knife. Um, so one of my super budget knives is the, uh, it, it is the LCK. I have the original LCK, the non-assisted version, uh, with the, the black with the Tonto, um, or the reverse Tonto, I should say. Uh, this is the new for 2021 with the assist. Uh, so we're going to look at that in just a moment. Uh, as soon as we get through the rest of the comments here, um, the element of fixed blade, especially, oops, I lost the comments. The element of fixed blade, especially the version with the leather sheath and the 10 CR is sweet. Yes, Tim. Uh, yeah, I'm liking it so far. Uh, B for Baron says, Oh no, that's uh, he's having a conversation with somebody. Tim says the sheath on the uh, Civivi Elementum looks cheaper than the ones that Civivi showed on their uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, that's why you know you need that's why you need YouTube reviewers in your life, right? <laughs> to show you what things actually are instead of the uh, the sales uh, people. So let's see. Uh, Lepro Goblicon, uh, Jay Lepro Goblicon, good name. Uh, you got the KME, it works good for him. Yeah, the KME is great. Uh, I haven't used it, but I've seen it used, and it basically works the same way as a Wicked Edge, just you know from top down. Um, and uh, so I would, I would definitely think that it works fine. Um, Eggs and ham, what's going on? Glad to see you in here. All right, so let me do let me do a couple more questions, and let you guys want me to go ahead and do the you know do a giveaway now, or do you want me to you, you want to hang out a little bit longer? Let me know what you guys want because I, I noticed we lost a couple of people. I don't want everyone to leave before we do that. Hey, eggs and ham, what's going on? Yeah, let me know what you guys want to do. I'm in a hotel room, so I, I can keep going. I just don't want to hold anyone up if they're just hanging on just to be here for the giveaway. All right, so while we're figuring that out, um, this is the LCK, as I said. Now, CRKT for this year, uh, one of the things that I really wanted to check out with them was the new assist mechanism. So the new assist mechanism that CRKT use, is using is, is actually fun. They made assists fun. Um, I don't know how they did that. So, you know, the, uh, look, we all know and love Kershaw's, um, Kershaw leak, right? So the, uh, the assist on this, it, it's good. And actually this was one that, other than the Benchmade 943, this was the other knife that really got me into knives. Um, so, uh, I definitely love this knife and, um, uh, you know, and the assist on it is good, but here, this is how the assist works on a normal, on that speed safe or how assists have worked for years. You engage the assist or the, you engage the spring about halfway through and then it continues, you know, sort of pushing, 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 pushing until you get all the way to the end. Then it finally uh, releases the tension off the blade. And then when you, you know, give it the slightest nudge, it'll, it'll pop out. So on CRKTs, you, this actually, and I don't know if this is true of all their knives or just the CR, of the LCK, um, but the LCK, this, this fires harder than the, than the non-assisted LCK, which is great. Um, and the D10 on the non-assisted one is actually really good. Uh, but um, the, instead of it engaging about halfway through, the lock actually, or the, the tension actually engages about, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, that was a, that was a D10 over here. The tension engage is still about halfway through, but here, check this out. About right, about right here, it wants to suck this in into the uh, um, into the knife. 
So when you do it slowly, it doesn't work as well, right? It'll, it won't suck it in. But when you do it, when you do it quickly, you're going to see it gets sucked in. Yeah, or it gets sucked in at the end. And it almost feels like you're, when you do it like this, it doesn't feel like you're fighting an assist. That's really the biggest difference is it feels like you're just closing a really smooth knife rather than, you know, rather than here, you can, it doesn't feel smooth and you're just fighting an assist all the way. It's really hard to describe, but you got to get one in hand, but it makes a huge difference and it's fun. Um, but the LCK remains one of my favorite knives. I like the slim profile on this. Uh, and the fact that this is a little bit larger, it's, it's more usable. It's in more in my size range now. Uh, and, you know, you got the deep carry clip. Uh, you got, you know, a, a full grip that's or a neutral grip for large glove size hands. You have a choil. You have a thin blade. You have a slicey blade. Um, and the ho it's a hollow ground blade that comes down to a really thin edge. I think, I don't know, I don't know the um, measurements on this one, but on the original LCK, Neves Knives measured it. I don't usually do measurements behind the edge thickness, but I think he measured the behind the edge thickness at like 15 thousandths. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a slicey knife, right? Um, so let's see. Going back to the comments. So Tim says, my choice, if we keep going, uh, eggs and ham says you do you boo boo. All right, boo boo. Um, yeah, eggs and ham says he just, they just got here. So you don't mind. Is it just, uh, is it both of you? Um, top dog says, hang out a little bit more. Um, Ian says, I can't find the wicked edge on DLT. What other re retailer should I check? So, uh, the wicked edge it's so DLT has not carried the wicked edge for a while. I don't know when they're getting more in stock. I don't know if they're getting more in stock. Uh, it, I, if I had to guess, and I also haven't seen the Wicked Edge on any other knife retailers recently. If I had to guess, I think that uh, what Wicked Edge is doing is they're doing the same exact thing that Strider Knives is doing, and that is, um, uh, I think it's Strider. So some of the knife retailers, it might be Strider, it might be not be Strider, but some of the knife retailers are not doing drops, at, and um, the knife companies are not doing drops at retailers because they're only, I'm sorry, it's Emerson. It's not Strider, it's Emerson. Emerson is only doing uh, sales through their own website right now. They're not um, selling to retailers. So um, I think Wicked Edge is doing the same thing. You can only buy Wicked Edge right now at wickededgeusa.com, I think is what it is. Um, but uh, check them out. I don't know if they have stock. They might be set behind because of COVID. Um, Poncho says, been listening in my shop, so keep going. Great. Uh, Eggs and Ham says I'm being attacked by puppy kisses at the moment kind of hard to type hello to everyone um, but that's the best some of the newer assisted Kershaws have, a, have assist plus bearings hallucinosis which ones have assist plus bearings I'm actually kind of curious uh, which ones that is uh, um, I would love to check some of those out I wonder if I have already um these blades says that looks beefier than the CEO. I like the looks of that one better. Uh, yeah, so if you're going to compare this to the CEO, the LCK to the CEO, go with this one. Now, the reason I say go with this one is I've had the CEO before, and it is uncomfortably thin um, from an ergonomics perspective. When I say thin, I'm talking about in this dimension right here, uh, not in this dimension. It, 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 the height of it is too thin to get a really, really comfortable grip on for any sustained cutting, this is fine. This, this is really actually fine for sustained cutting. I have no problem with this. Um, all right. The original LCKs, Pancho says the original LCKs may still be available on Ruger's website. They were a while back and online uh, $16. I think they were actually $15. Um, I do think they sold out because I, I went back and tried to buy like 10 or so of them to give away on the channel. I was just going to do, I was honestly going to run a video where I just gave away 10 at once. Um, but uh, I think they were sold out by the time I went back and checked, unless they put more on. Um, so the LCK used to be co-branded with Ruger and uh, the CRKT, I think, ended the relationship with Ruger. So um, there's that. Uh, pocket Quips. 
Pocket Clip switchable on the LCK? Uh, no. No, Pocket Clip is not switchable on the LCK. So uh, Z-Man ZDC says, I'm just enjoying hanging with night peeps during the weekend, not just the weekend. Yeah, so, I mean, look, I, I went to, uh, I'm in San Antonio uh, right now instead of Houston. I live in Houston. Um, I'm in San Antonio at a hotel. So uh, I'm away from the wife and kids, and I have time to go on a live. When does that ever happen? Um, so uh, Z-Man says the wife's eating dinner at the moment. Um, come on, she can eat and hang at the same time. Um, Christopher Tank says, favorite three triple E. Well, my favorite three are my three E's. Um, nobody really asks, but uh, triple E stands for my, my kids' names. So they all start with E. Um, but if you're asking my favorite three knives, right now, my favorite three knives in my collection are, in no particular order, I probably should do a video on this, but just off the top of my head, truth is I, I don't have my knives in front of me, so it's hard to really say, but off the top of my head, I'm going to go with the, my uh, Shir Gorov 110 Kickstop. Uh, my, uh, I'm really enjoying my 10V Jaeger Blades Custom right now. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite three, but it's definitely, I mean, I've been carrying a lot recently. Um, let's see. I like my Hoback, uh, uh, Hoback Specs Buster. I, I like that quite a bit. Um, my Hinder XM18 No Choil One Clip, uh, all titanium. My Hinder Full Track. Those are some of my top knives. Again, I don't have my collection in front of me. That and that's a CKF um, uh, Evo, the Rotten Rotten Designs Evo, Evo Two. Evo 3, by the way, I think is coming out at some point. Um, the Evo 1 was a monstrous knife. The Evo 2 is a tad bit small. The Evo 3 is going to be is going to split the split the difference and be a little bit larger than the Evo 2 and a little bit smaller than the Evo 1. Um, just put 100 LCKs in a cart. Uh, JN, are you referring to on Ruger's website? Are they that are are they back on the website? Uh, Ethan says I modded the original LCK LCK Warncliffe. It was not fun to say. Uh, well, what you you didn't like the uh, the original LCK, Ethan, or you, or you didn't like the uh, the way it turned out. Uh, Top Dog says the last I looked they were sold out. Um, Leper Goblicon says the Kershaw Turismo is assisted and has bearings. I have not tried the Turismo. Uh, honestly, I had no interest in the Turismo. When I looked at the Turismo, it sort of looked like, you know, just a lot of other knives out on the market. So it didn't interest me. But if it has something different like that, I, I, I might, maybe I'll try it. Turismo, Collateral, not sure what else. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to check out the Turismo or the Collateral uh, just to check that out. Just check Ruger. They have an LCK, but it's 1995, and it looks exactly like the one I have here. Um, yeah, so this, all right, so the, the original LCK came in two different versions. It came in a black-bladed reverse tanto shape, and it came in a, uh, a shape just like this, but smaller. Um, and neither one of them were assisted. Uh, in the, the CRKT then ended the relationship with Ruger, as far as I'm aware, uh, and Ruger advertised them at basically closeout deals for about 15 bucks for both, both versions. Then CRKT this year redid the LCK in both versions, the Black Blade uh, Reverse Tonto and the regular one like this. Um, they redid them in, with, with the new assist for 2021 and, uh, and then also did the, the LCK Large, which this is the same as the, as the satin bladed smaller LCK, but larger. They do not have a large reverse Tonto version. Um, by the way, for those of you just joining now or have joined after the start of the show, after this is over, I'm going to be doing the drawing video on my recent giveaway. 
uh, for the Kershaw end game. So if you, if you haven't entered, um, I, I'm extending the deadline till the end of this, uh, uh, till the end of this broadcast. So, um, Joshua Wilson says, when's the giveaway? Josh, you just coming for the giveaway. Uh, so I was ready to do it before, but it seemed like people wanted to hang out a little bit longer. So uh, I'll probably do it fairly soon. Um, awesome. I have two E-named kids, says Ian. Uh, yeah. Awesome. You know, I don't know where the E's came from, why we decided to do E. Uh, honestly, my first two kids were named after family members who passed away. Uh, and my third kid, because the other two were E's, I think my wife just wanted the third E. I don't know if she's trying to be like the Kardashians or what, what her thought process was, but, you know, happy wife, happy life. Um, all right. Uh, Tim says it's not the same $15 LCK they had. Uh, James Jones says, is that a front flipper? This is not a front flipper. Um, I have some front flippers on the channel recently. This is the Imperium is a front flipper. The uh, Concept Hazakura, which I'll have a review on shortly, uh, is a front flipper. Both of those are awesome knives. Uh, and... What else? Um, there was, I think there was another budget front flipper that I had recently that I forgot to mention. Ethan says it took roughly a week to mod the LCK. Not fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you did to it that, that was causing such problems, but there's a lot of the mods on this I think would be difficult to do just because you have stainless steel liners, you have you know very thin constructions. So there's not a lot of space to like go, you know, remove, go start re removing material, you know, because once you start removing material here, you're, uh, you're risking uh, the integrity of the knife essentially. So yeah, I can, I can imagine it might've taken a little while to do that. Um, that right there is my wife's favorite knife. She uses it all the time. Uh, you're, I, I think you're referring to the LCK. Yeah. The LCK is awesome. Uh, I, I, I do not like the fact that it doesn't get as much love as it should. Um, still waiting for the results, but the doctor convinced it's a torn lateral meniscus. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I hope she feels better. The Turismo and Collateral were supposed to have the SLT spring-loaded flipper tab like the ZT GTC collaboration um, 0055. What happened to that? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Eggs and Ham, we're all, uh, we're all hoping for um, her to heal quickly. Um... 2.99k, almost there. Yeah, look, listen, guys, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. I want to do a 3,000 uh, subscriber giveaway. I want to do it. All right. Um, never heard it said that way. I always heard happy wife, happy life. Um, did I say happy life, happy wife? I meant happy wife, happy life. But um, I don't know what I said. I'll have to go back and listen to it later. Uh, Katie says, thank you guys with a mouthful of food. I'm waiting on the EMP EDC nimble got it on, on it early and can't wait. It looks awesome. So EMP EDC, uh, you know, was uh, awesome and gave us, gave me a little discount to get an early look, early review on YouTube of the, uh, Slender Man, the OTF. Uh, which um, I have a review on if you haven't checked it out. And it's uh, it's actually a surprisingly good knife for the price. Um, but it is a little thin. It's, it's kind of like a like an OTF version of the CEO, if I had to <laughs> compare it to something, of the CRK CEO, CRKT CEO. So, uh, but the, the Nimble I have not checked out. Um, I should give that a look. Did I hit 3,000? Did I? If so, I'll have to get a, I'll have to get a, uh, a giveaway going. Hopefully. Um, okay, I'm gonna do one or two more questions on the Ask Me Anything and then I'll do the giveaway. Um, by the way, before I do that, is there anything on any of the knives you guys saw tonight 
the Savivi, either of the, of the Savivi Elementums, the LCK, the uh, Imperium, the uh, CRKT, uh, Polar 3. Is there anything um, here that you guys had questions on? Happy to answer it. I'm going to pull some of these off so it's not looking overly crowded. So let me go on. Um, what? So back to the ask me anything questions. What knife have I bought, got rid of, regretted it, and got it again? Um, the Benchmade turret. The Benchmade turret. That is a very good knife, very good hard use knife. That I don't know why it was discontinued. I really don't. I don't know why it was discontinued. It's it's a good knife. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of at a loss on that. Um, I assume it was discontinued because they didn't want a competitor to the Adamus with the new release of the Mini Adamus and the Adamus this year with the crew wear. But um, I would have been just as excited for a crew wear uh, Benchmade turret. What other knife have I regretted and bought and, and bought again? Well, I've bought the, the 943 three times, but that has a sort of a special place in my heart. I didn't get rid of it. I, I lost them. Um, I, I keep selling the paramilitary too. And I keep buying it mostly as a size comparison for the channel. Um, I really like the Shaman. I really like the pair of three. I really like the Manix. I know the pair of two is, is something that everyone absolutely loves. Honestly, if I didn't have a channel, I might not have one around because all those three other knives are all better than the paramilitary two. Uh, let's see. So someone asks, do I ever collect vintage knives? Um, I think vintage knives are really, really cool. I, I love vintage knives. I don't buy them. Um, I don't buy them because I just don't have, you know, I, I like all the new improved actions on knives. I'm a fidget guy. Um, the steels are great. The older steels, you know, are sort of cheaper to have now. And, you know, if, if you were to buy a vintage knife, you're going to pay more. So you can get the same steels for much cheaper now. I don't really do this, the, the vintage thing, but, um, you know, I, uh, uh, I would, I would, I wouldn't turn away a vintage knife. I think they're really cool. And I, I love looking at them. Um, all right, let's look here. I think he's messing around. I only see two, 2.99 thousand. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not quite at three, three, uh, 3,000 yet. Top Dog says he's going to get the LCK in large. Size matters. Yeah, it, it matters. Get the large. Um, Tim says he needs to try a compression lock someday. Um, yeah, I mean, the compression lock is good. Uh, it is not my favorite method of opening. I know a lot of people, it's, it's like their favorite method of opening. Uh, it's not mine, um, but I, I do like it. Um Mini Benchmade 945 is nice. Got it. And the Spartan Aster. Yeah, both of those are good knives. Um, but I want a pair of three. Mark Herrera says, do I have a Domino? Uh, I don't have a Domino. I've never experienced a Domino. Um, I'd like to check one out. But I, I don't really have a reason to buy it because they're discontinued. And, um, you know, if I posted a video, I, mean, I don't, I don't, it, it's not a size that I would normally buy for myself. And if I post, if, if I'm buying it to review for the channel, the truth is not many people are going to watch the video because it's discontinued. Uh, let's see. All right, let's do one last question and then we will, I will answer any final questions in the chat that you guys post and then I'll do one final question here um, of the list that was here. Um, all right, this is a good one. What's my best advice for someone starting out in knife collecting? So um, 
my best advice would be that you are is to buy something be realistic with yourself you know don't insist that you like large knives if you really don't like large knives or insist that you like small knives if you really don't like small knives for most people medium sized knives are going to be the sweet spot um, that's sort of number one uh, number two is you know buy quality materials um, from quality manufacturers uh, if you you know if you're uh, don't just buy a whole bunch of cheap stuff just to have a lot of knives um, you know it, buy the nicest knife you can comfortably afford um, and but but it being something that you're going to be happy with uh, however, if you can comf comfortably afford crazy knives over $200, um, I would say start out with something more in the one, $150 to $200 range, right? Um, don't, don't start out with a, with a Chris Reeve. Um, all right, so let me go back. That was the last one there. All right, Ian says, do I generally prefer bearings or washers? Um, I like bearings. Uh, so I'll, I'll say this. For fidget factor, I like bearings. Um, if I'm going hard use, I like washers. Uh, and washers can be really smooth. TRM does awesome washers. Um, Chris Reeve, of course. Badger says, I inherited all my grandpa's and great grandpa's knives. I have around 30 or so from 1920s to 58s eras. That's awesome. Those historical knives are, uh, some of that stuff blows me away. Uh, give away how to get in. Um, so if, if, if James, if you're talking, James Jones says, give away how to get in. So there's three giveaways that, that we could possibly be talking about here. One is the, give, the giveaway for the Kershaw Endgame, which again, at the end of this video is going to be um, over. So there's a, there's a video I did maybe two or three videos back on my channel uh, for a giveaway on the Kershaw Endgame. You go to that video, watch the video, um, follow the instructions, and enter. Um, uh, and leave a comment on the video and follow the instructions on what to say in the comment. Uh, it, there's a giveaway now that's going to be given away in just a moment um, on this channel, and we'll go over how to win that. Uh, and then there's going to be um, a giveaway for 3,000 subscribers that is coming up that hasn't happened yet. So um, that is, uh, there's that. So let's see. Um, Pancho 151 says, don't get caught up in the hype. I assume you're talking about what advice you'd give to new collectors. Uh, and that is great advice um, to give to new collectors is don't get caught up in the hype. Honestly, some of the best knives that are out there for beginners are gonna be knives that have been around for, for 10 to 20 years. The Benchmade 940 comes to mind. The you know the Spyderco um, Manix comes to mind. It, Spyderco Manix might be the best value knife for a beginner in knives. Um, if you're talking about a really good quality knife, um, you know that is going to stand up for pretty much any use you need. Um, so, yeah, the. Let's see. Uh, anything else? Is a hot dog a sandwich? Um, Tim has has that as his question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, yes, a hot dog is a sandwich. Unpopular opinion. Um, it is a piece of meat between two layers of bread or between a, a bun. It is a sandwich. A burger is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is basically a sub, and a sub is a sandwich. By the way, how many people on here do not call a sub a sub? I know, I know, you know, Northern, I, I grew up in, in the DC metro area uh, and, you know, I used to live in New York. Everyone in New York calls them heroes. Uh, I know they're called, uh, you know, submarine sandwich other places, um, but it's, it's a sub sandwich. Uh, let's see, anything else? Okay. I think that's it. Um, so, uh, by the way, I, I'm, I'm seeing some people enter the giveaway. Uh, so that's great. Some of the comments are popping up on my screen. All right. So a sub is definitely a sub here in Wisconsin. The sub in Michigan grinder. 
Are you talking about a coffee grinder? Or are you talking about uh, the app? <laughs> um, oh, a grinder instead of a sub? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I've heard it called a grinder, but now with, um, uh, now with the app called Grinder, I don't know that you want a food-related called Grinder. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, call it a sub. Uh, all right, so everyone seems to be calling it a sub. All right, so look, I'm in a hotel. I don't have a ton of. I forgot to sort of. I forgot to bring a giveaway knife. Um, so I'm I'm going to be giving away uh, actually this Kershaw leak that's here. Uh, if you have a Kershaw leak or do not want it, and the winner can contact me, and I'll give you probably a choice of one or two other knives. Um, you know, that, uh, uh, that you can do, but, um, if you've never had a leak, uh, definitely it's worth uh, picking up. It is one of the staple knives, uh, that if a beginner was asking me, what are some knives to check out? Uh, this would be one of those knives because honestly it is one of those knives that gets people into knives and collecting. It's ergonomic. It has, um, the, uh, uh, it, you know, it has a nice, uh, sort of worn cliff style blade, nice, uh, tip that's great for piercing a good size for doing that. Uh, just an all around, um, you know, great knife. Uh, the pocket clip is huge. Um, and it, uh, you know, most, it, it basically carries tip down, although it is reversible. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So Joshua Wilson says you just took a leak. All right. So you're disqualified. Just kidding. Um, so, uh, yeah, the blur is also a great one. Uh, I had the M4 blur for a while, uh, and I, I, I like that a lot, quite, uh, actually. So, yeah, this, this is one of uh, Kershaw's USA-made. Um, uh, USA-made, uh, you can see it right there, the flag, USA-made. Uh, so that is, um, that's great. And, yeah, this is one of the most iconic knives you can possibly get in the knife game. Um, so how are we going to do this? Uh, I have... I'm going to have to grab a pen, honestly, because I don't have, oh, you know what? All right. <laughs> I'm going to do it this way. Uh, there is only 25 people here. Okay. Um, so since we only have 25 people here, I am going to have you guys, uh, Guess my room number in the hotel. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to do that. I'm going to have you guess my room number in the hotel. Um, and uh, it's, uh, but because I don't want to give you my exact room number, uh, we're going to guess the last two digits of it. Okay. So it's a three digit number. Uh, the last two digits is a number between one and 50. Uh, and <laughs> what city, what hotel? <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's, there's multiple floors in this hotel. So I'm going to have you guys guess the last two digits, uh, you know, um, of the hotel. No, wait, don't guess yet. Tim, don't guess yet. Um, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no guessing yet. No guessing yet. I'm going to say start. No guessing yet. Nothing counts. I'm going to type... I don't know if I can type and start, but I'll, uh, um, so I'm going to have you guess a number between one and 50. Everyone's going to get one guess. Okay. Everyone's going to get one guess. Stop, stop guessing. I'm going to turn this car around. Um, okay. So we're going to do a number between one and 50. When I say start, what we're going to do is we are going to, um, we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to look at the numbers there. Um, I am going to type in, type in start when we're ready to go. All the numbers that are guessed so far do not count. Um, and I'm only going to, uh, do start. We're going to wait about one minute. You're going to have about one, one minute or so to get in your entries. And then, uh, the, person who is closest to the number without going over uh, will will get the knife. If there are multiple people that get it, we'll have a second round, um, you know, of a uh, tiebreaker. Okay. 
that's how we're going to do it. And I'm going to go ahead and say start. Last two digits, number between 1 and 50. Okay, the guesses are slowing down. I'll give you guys maybe, maybe another, another 20, 10, 20 seconds or so. I'm going to count C. Lemansky's entry as 0, 09 um, unless he objects. It seems like everyone's entered, so I will give ten more seconds, and then we will um, we will end. Okay, stop. Okay, so there is one person that got it exactly correct. Top dog, I'll count yours, but uh, unfortunately, you're, you didn't get it correct. Um, so uh, I didn't, the, um, there's one person who got it correct. Let me just double check on mine to make sure there wasn't a second person. Okay, so here we go. The winner is ENG EDC. Congratulations, Ian. Thanks for hanging out throughout the entire uh, hour and a half ordeal. You can email me at triple.e.edc at gmail.com, triple.e.edc at gmail.com, and uh, claim the prize. Um, since you run an EDC channel, I'm not sure if you have a leak already, but let me know if you do. And guys, do not forget, I am going to be doing the drawing video for the uh, for the Kershaw Endgame after this. So definitely stay tuned. It might even, you know, I'm going to be doing it so quickly after this that you may as well just sort of just hang around and check to see if you want. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for being here. Look, this was a long, a long, long uh, live chat. I mean, um, probably my longest one ever. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this one. I'm going to do another Ask Me Anything probably uh, because there were a lot of comments on that video. Uh, and so there's a lot of questions I can answer. Um, good night, everyone. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, you know, uh, if you have any questions you, you, know, you want to ask me when this video posts, feel free to comment on this video. I'll be happy to take a look at those. Um, Pancho, uh, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Um, Lion of Judah, Lamb of God, you are, are you proselytizing? Um, have a good night, everyone. Dane, Dane, we're just signing off. All right. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, Dane. We're just signing off.
All right. Have a good night, everyone.